Hi everybody, it's Jen on Cake Tastic Cakes today. We're going to make a gum paste teacup. Are you ready? All right, this is going to be part of the set here, the Alice in Wonderland cake. And if you want to see another piece I made from this, just let me know. I made this tea set video because the ones out there were not very helpful when I was trying to figure out how to do this. So hopefully this will help you guys a bit. Um, you need a cup and a saucer, so start there. Get whatever you got out. It doesn't matter. Like Mine don't match if you pay attention to them. It's kind of scalloped, but I'm just tracing around it in a circle to get the general shape of it. And flip it over, and you see powdered sugar everywhere all over the place in this video. You got to powdered sugar the heck out of your fondant, or excuse me, gum paste, or it's going to stick to your plates. It'll never dry. So press it against the plate, and as you see, I'm like really focusing on the circle, the part on the plate where the cup will sit down and nestle into it, if you know what I mean. So make sure you really accent that, put it aside. Okay. Uh, I used ivory gum paste instead of white, whatever color you want. You know, it doesn't matter. Just don't make it too thin. It's got to be thick enough to stand up being shaped. And as you'll see in this video, dropped a bunch of times. This is for the teacup. Again, my teacup didn't match my saucer. It doesn't matter. You just need the size. They're all pretty much, you know, universal as far as one fitting into the other. I tried setting it in without cutting it because you saw I cut kind of like a Pac-Man shape out of it. And it just wasn't working. If you guys can get it to work for you, that's great. That's probably the, it is the better way to do it. I ended up cutting it and folding it over on itself almost like a calla lily flower because that was the only way I could get it to go down into it. So that's what I did. I pressed it down. Using my rolling pin, I'm making sure that it goes up against all the edges down in the bottom of the teacup. And I'm using my knife to carefully, because I didn't want to actually damage my teacup, even though I've never used them ever, uh, go around the top and trim off the extra. You can see where it overlaps right there. It's a little bit thicker. So it's just something that you're going to have to work on removing and thinning out, just like I ended up doing. It's a whole lot of bad video of my hands in the way, but all I'm doing is pressing and pressing and pressing and trying to, to flatten out that seam and smooth it out. If you guys are good at it, at blending your seams, then this shouldn't be a problem for anyone. At the time, I didn't know about making like a paste, kind of a putty and filling it in. So I just pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed. And again, powder sugar the heck out of it before you put it in or you're never going to get it out. This is like teacup number two or three that I made because I just couldn't get them out. I couldn't get them out. I ended up breaking them. All right. Let them sit overnight. They're going to have to sit at least overnight, even two nights if possible. You can see the plate there. You can see the rim, the little circles in it. And there's my teacup. And if you're careful, you'll probably see me toss it or drop it in one of these shots. Anyway, yep, there it goes, tipped right over. We're going to add the bottom ring onto the teacup, the little base that it will sit on. So I'm rolling out the gum paste. It's supposed to be even, but it wasn't. I don't know why. Just looking back on some of these older videos, I'm like, Ugh, what the heck was I doing? But anyway, uh, roll out a strip. I forget how thick it was. It wasn't that thick, maybe, you know, a centimeter or so. And put it in a coil, see how it fits, see how it sits. Uh, see how it sits on the bottom of the cup. I even ended up putting it into the saucer to see how it lined up with the, the ring that's in the plate itself, which is probably the better way to do it. And once you get the right length, wet the pieces, stick them together, then get your little teacup and you're going to smush it right on top. You're going to use water to seal it all together. See, it actually looks like a nice size there. And again, you don't want it too tall either, unless that's the style you're going for. But see, yep, there I went. I tossed it again. I don't know how this teacup didn't break. <laughs> it was like immortal or something. But you can see that big crack in it. I ended up putting that as the back of my teacup, because otherwise it was just, you know, unusable. All right, so there you go. You got your basis, basic teacup going. I'm going to cut yet another strip. And this is going to become the handle. So it's the same thickness. You can see it's much more, much more uniform this time because now it seems to matter more to me. And I'm trying to make it nice and straight as well. If you guys, you know, don't have a cup and saucer, you probably definitely have at least like a dessert plate or something like that and a mug. You can make it work. You know, you just might have a little bit bigger of a teacup. That's all. 
So you can find ways around it if you're really desperate. There's always antique stores or thrift stores or whatever. Anyway, okay, so I got my teacup handle. I attached it at the top, as you see there. And I tried to get fancy with it and have it all flared out. And it was just too soft and I was too impatient, so it wasn't going to happen. So I ended up just pressing it on there like a big old question mark shape. And honestly, it doesn't look bad. So let that sit for a little while. When it's hardened, it's time to paint your design on the cup. I'm using just a couple food coloring. Uh, they're gel food coloring. One is copper. The other, I think, I was sky blue. I went around the top to try to give it that, you know, gold trim or look sort of idea where it's, you know, just trimmed around the edges. Because, you know, gum paste is kind of tough to work with sometimes. It's not the most perfect in level. If you guys are more patient, you'll be able to do better than me out there. And I just painted some random flower petally blue teardrop design on it because I didn't know what else to do. For some reason, I was seriously lacking in the inspiration here. I tried to just make it colorful, and yeah, that's really all I did, was just try to make it colorful. I mixed the food coloring, I want to say with water, because that's usually what I have, because I tend to not have vodka on me. Other people swear by vodka, they say it dries quicker, and you know, whatever you got. If you don't have vodka, don't go to the, dr to the, <laughs> to the alcohol store, just use water, it works fine. Although, if you have rum, you could drink the rum while you do it, so there's always that. Anyway, I painted the dish, I painted the cup, I painted the front and the back, threw on some extra little dark lines and highlighted it, and just made a teacup. If you're more skilled, make a prettier design than me, that's great. I'd love to see it if you made it. If you have any hints on how to get rid of that seam, let me know, that'd be helpful. Anyway, if you do want to see anything else from my Alice in Wonderland cake, I have most of the decorations video taped already. So just let me know. But thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes. See you next time. Bye.